Peace, family. All right, so uh, we're going to share to a few more groups. And then I can get started. <clears throat> Hope everyone's doing well. This is Tuesday. Yeah, on a Tuesday. So today's video is uh, titled, What to Do with Your Dead Body. This was a um, pretty uh, interesting topic on my YouTube. I didn't really dig deep into what happens after death in a lot of videos. Some of them. <clears throat> but uh, on a deeper level, there was uh, someone who I follow on YouTube share one of my videos got me a few more subscribers I pre that they were very interested in was the death ritual because everything is a death I mean everything I'm sorry is a ritual everything's a death everything is death well they're working on not allowing that to happen but everything is a ritual Okay, yeah, um, that's my fault. I usually know that when I leave my house, Facebook doesn't like switching from uh, my Wi-Fi signal to my cell phone signal. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so uh, today's video is uh, speaking on uh, what to do with one's dead body. So this is kind of uh, allowing you to understand that you have some type of say <laughs> and what happens when you die when you really don't you know you can't just uh go bury your own dead it's not really allowed so they have two systems in order you can go to a morgue a mortician and he can uh infuse you with uh liquids or spirits because this is what the video is about to get into spirits that kind of make you seem still alive, still animated, still uh, here. And uh, what people don't really understand is that everything is always a reflection of spirit. <clears throat> so if uh, the physical experience is uh, that body sitting in a morgue for four days, five days, and uh, it being brought back to life, in a sense, it's kind of what's happening to you. You know, they are keeping you here. So you can't go beyond the veil. It's a deep thing. Where someone was like, uh, so would you suggest cremation? And uh, if I had to choose, oh man, that sucks. Gotta go home. If I had to choose between uh, cremation and being buried well here's the truth of, of the matter and then I'm going to get more uh, specific into uh, this video this is going to be a good one I'm just building it up getting there it's been a minute since I did a live with like five days four days I don't know so if I had a choice between being buried in a box or being burnt in a box because these are the two options you have there aren't any other ones you have uh, in <clears throat> in this Babylonian or Babylonian uh, world. Uh, you know, burnt in a box, buried in a box. Now, if I had a choice, I would uh, allow myself to be buried. You know, um, okay, I'm not going to speak to my uh, my own personal beliefs because if I really, if you really wanted to know, if I had a personal choice. In death, I 
I would want to be buried alive. But that would be very controversial. If I came on this platform, which I just did, and said I would want to be buried alive, people would be like, dude, you sound fucking crazy. But this is not what this video is about. But I want you to know how deep my mind goes when it comes to things like this. So I would personally want to be buried alive. Now, why would I want to be buried alive? That would be signifying that it would be the time of my uh, burying or my death. So I would already kind of be aware that my death is coming or that death is upon me. And then I would transition my death uh, into, uh, you know, that land, that, uh, soil, that carbon. Uh, but that's just because, you know, I'm aware of the subsystems, the subterrain systems that go below us. And that's just a way for me to be able to go deeper into the subterrain. So anyway, to go deeper into the, uh, ath, ath, athar or ether, uh, realm, uh, you would essentially have to, uh, use fire. You would have to use the element that they use. They call themselves seraphim. They call themselves uh, the smokeless flame. You know, there's different words that kind of associate with uh, who and what these beings consider themselves. So, you know, in order for you to be able to uh, uh, get to um, the subterranean systems, you would have to use the element of uh, earth and water. Where in order for you to get to the... Uh, uh, heaven. So in order to get to hell, you got to use earth and water. In order to get to uh, heaven, you have to use air and fire. Doesn't that make sense? Isn't that kind of what they use? Spaceships and shit, you know? Um, uh, <clears throat> wells, water is deep as hell below us, you know, into the earth. You know why? You know why I had to come all the way home? Because I forgot my fucking rings. It's so terrible, bro. I'm like, I'm already late. I got like 15 billion places to be right now. I overslept. This is what happens when you have a weird sleep pattern. But y'all about to, you know, y'all about to get a taste of my house. This is what we get. We get plaid pants and puppies. Plaid pants and I left my rings. I'm on live too, bro, so don't even get into this. If you ain't ready to get into this, boy, I ain't even gonna flip this camera to Ooh. 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 Oh, heaven is a place on earth. Is it? Is it? Hey, Google. You were supposed to wake me up an hour ago. Why are you going off right now? Okay, see you in an hour. No! No! Hey, Google, cancel all my alarms. Sure, I canceled it. Oh, Lord, okay. All right, where was I at? Let's just start over. Okay, so, uh, in order to know what to do with one's body, you need to know what one body is composed of. So the body. It's kind of like, uh, okay, so you say you have your body, you have your uh, spirit, and you have your soul, all right? So these three things kind of like work together. You have the body, you have the spirit. You have the soul. Hold on. Let me get a little Burberry action. Greatness. All right, so, man, I bet they're like, yo, dude, how are you a metaphysical teacher, dude? I do this. This is a multifaceted individual. All right, so... I really was like far, far and turned around. Google's supposed to remind me to take my medicine. Good thing I remember myself. See, Google fucking up. I try to tell Google to do something. I try to tell El Googe to do something. And what's Google do? It does what the fuck it wants. But that's, you know, that's us. You know, how the fuck you will create a technology? 
that replicates us or reflects us and then get mad when they do the shit we do. Same shit. We inconsistent? It's inconsistent. All right, so we're going to go back into uh, the office. You know what I'm saying? Boom. I bet y'all like, dude, you're crazy, crazy. My kind of crazy. We'll get there. So, in order for us to uh, know what to do with one's body, we need to kind of know what one bo- what. Oh, and I come off. The contact dude, is starting. dude, what if I was meditating right now? What if I was like so much in Zen mode, and then you hit me with this shit? That shit really do be helping though. It get me like on my level. Okay, all right. We are officially ready to go now. So now we're gonna start the video. So my dear uh, Jessica, yes, you know Luna Verda uh, on this platform. Even though it probably ain't supposed to be dropping names, I don't give a fuck. Thank you so much for all your help and your assistance. So we go like splitty splice. All the other bullshit, and then start the video from right here from my YouTube. Hi, my name is Quentin Q. Reeves. I'm a metaphysical therapist, and I'm here to expose the truth about you. Come on this journey with me. You're so gimmicky. Come, come on. The journey to your mind. I gotta hit the garage, close the door. All right, so look, <clears throat> in order for you to understand one's body, you have to understand what is uh, associated with one's body. All right, I'm, I ain't gonna look at your comments no more because I can't hit any of the Indian people that are in my neighborhood right now because for some reason, I moved to a part of Georgia where everyone is Indian, everyone. I was like, I might as well be Indian, you know? But uh, anyway, so one's body consists of two things. It's more than that, but just stay with me. Two things that we have been taught, gauged. Because remember, information is about gauging individuals. A gauge kind of defines your speed. You know, and your, uh, ex well, not just your, that's your acceleration, things like that, but literally how your cap, a gauge is a cap. You know, my gauge on my car right now is 140 uh, miles per hour. So I'm gauged. I cannot go beyond 140 miles, no matter what the fuck I do. Um, you know, now you can hijack the system. It's called cold, cold air intake. And uh, this will make your engine go faster. And that's kind of the secret of cold tech. It can kind of allow things to move even faster. But all right, let's just get into this video. Damn, sorry, man, I'm sorry. You know, I'm kind of excited in life right now. A lot of good things is happening with this fucked up new moon that just came in. All right, so the body consists of something you would call a spirit and something you would call a soul. But I kind of need you to understand what this is. The soul needs the body. The spirit needs the body. Okay? So now the body is kind of like the prop for the witch. The prop for the magician. Okay? Every witch needs her broomstick, needs her herbs, needs her... Whatever the fuck makes her a rich. Every wizard or warlock needs his staff, needs his big old top hat. You know, get what I'm saying? These are this this is their body. Alright? Alright. But it's moreover, the soul and spirit has to have things so it can express itself. Now, how is the soul expressing itself? How is the spirit or spirits expressing itself? 
Well, this would be how. Soul represents consciousness. Uh, okay. But then consciousness also represents awareness. It's like, oh, okay, all right. Now it gets a little bit more interesting. So soul represents someone's awareness, someone's consciousness, all right? And then the spirit is occupying in whatever polarity you're placing your consciousness, all right? So if you place your consciousness in good energy, then the spirits are feeding, using good energy. If you are feeding bad energy, then the beings are using bad energy. But we don't do good and bad. So if you feed the beings light energy, they get information. If you feed the beings dark energy, they get unawareness, unconsciousness, you get chaos, but from chaos comes order. So you then have to understand you're kind of dealing with two things, the sun and the moon. So you're dealing with two forms of consciousness literally in our sky, our sky. We don't really have Saturn predominant in our sky, Jupiter predominant in our sky, Mars, Venus, Mercury. No, you have the sun and the moon as the most predominant consciousness. I'll talk about the new moon. About the predominant consciousness on this planet. So listen, this is you. So your soul has two consciousness. So then you have two souls. Oh, whoa, Q, what you talking about? Well, you have the light soul and the shadow soul. And this is what I'm trying to help you understand, okay? One's body houses one's soul. One's soul connects to one's consciousness. Well, let's ask the question. Are you conscious 24 hours a day? Or is there a break, a lapse, a gap in your consciousness? Let's ask that question again. Are you conscious 24 hours a day? Or is there a gap in your consciousness? Q, what would the gap of consciousness be? It would be sleep. You all go to sleep. Therefore, not conscious. You do not know what the fuck is going on around you. The TV is playing a whole episode, but you don't have a clue what the fuck is on that TV show. Yes, you sleep. Okay, so the sleep is the gap or lapse in consciousness. So I'm telling you right now, your soul represents consciousness. Consciousness is then broken up in two things right now. The moon and the sun. Ah! Okay, so then wait. So then now the spirits are occupying in one of these two polarities. One, the moon. Lu, the moon. Lu, Lumeria, Luna. That would be signifying those spirits. So the Lumerian spirits are connecting to your moon consciousness and it is these spirits that are occupying and dwelling within self that's only one polarity just the moon and you have been giving whiffs or have been getting whiffs of moon tech clones is considered moon tech replicates is considered moon tech all right so you kind of have to understand the two break breakdowns of a clone you have clones that operate from two frequencies. You have clones that are copies. You have clones that are replicates, okay? Copies is no different than like a copy, okay? So this is something that's made quickly. You can make a copy quickly. You can produce a copy quickly. But producing something that is authentic, that is original, takes more effort. It's kind of like if you were going to take Mona Lisa, okay? and make a copy of it. The fuck? Okay, you can make a copy of it. We've seen copies of it, you know, but it doesn't have the depth, the paint detail, the strokes, the expression that is in that original. 
So, in order to make a replicate, you have to get the paint out. You gotta get the canvas out. You gotta replicate the exact moves uh, as the original. So then now you can kind of understand the difference between a replicate and a copy. Replicates represent mimicking. Copies aren't mimicking. They're just here to produce a certain space time, a certain agenda, just one particular thing, you know? But I'm not even gonna get into that. This video shouldn't be about clones. All right, so we're going to the videos what do you do with your dead body? We're going to get there. Okay, so. If I'm telling you that you have spirits of the moon. And you have spirits of the sun. Well, this then becomes very interesting. Because the moon has two parts. The light side and the dark side. And because the moon has the light side of the moon. And the dark side side of the moon you're now literally dealing with like a riff or a battle between the beings or spirits of the moon some of them are of the light or are aware of themselves some of them are in still darkness or in one's own darkness okay but then you also have the sun and now you hear stories of a second sun a planet X, a nebula, a nebula. Okay, and now understand a nebula is a very real thing, you know. And this is really what they're trying to explain, a nebula. But I don't have a Wikipedia in front of me, so I can't give you the direct definition of a nebula, you know. But uh, anyway, so now you're even dealing with another sun, and they call this sun the black sun. Okay, so now you're literally deal. Think about what I'm telling you. You're dealing with unconscious light. So that's basically a dark light. And then you're dealing with light and unconsciousness. <sighs> so anyway, this is what's going on with himself. All right. So when one is buried, one cannot escape beyond the earth plane because you are placing or trapping oneself a, within an earth element, it's called trees, okay? I want you to really understand this ritual, no different than one's home, okay? Now, you are a tree, but that's a whole nother video, it's a whole nother conversation, it's a whole nother topic, but I was driving for Uber for someone, an Indian lady, and she was in my car, and she was like, you know, I love where we live, but she was just like, all the trees are just disappearing, She's like, and it saddens me, it hurts me that all the trees are leaving. And I said, they're not leaving. What do you mean? The fuck? Nothing leaves. Energy doesn't die. Transferred or transformed. So where are all the trees right now? She says, it's so sad. She says it. She says, and this, this lady has a PhD. She says, it's so sad that I see all the trees gone. And all these houses are popping up. And I'm like, lady... All the trees are transforming into homes, okay? Are transforming into chakras. Because if you really, I have videos, I have past videos explaining how your home is no different than the different chakras in one's body, you know? Um, you know, but this is what one did in, in, in self, you know? You have the tree of life and then the tree of knowledge. And the tree of knowledge resonates with chakras, that's why it's knowledgeable. Each state, each dimension of self obtains or retains a certain realm of knowledge, you know? But that's what the whole Dragon Ball Z thing is with the seven balls or something like that. I don't watch it, but I came across one episode or something. I was like, dude, they're talking about the seven chakras. And once you master all seven chakras, you can control, you know, uh, heart-mind and not mind-heart. But this also represents how one is occupying self. Either one is operating from below to above or from above to below. But this also is defining on what spirits you're occupying with. So, there are certain spirits that do not want to go beyond earth realm. This is for a very real reason. This is called judgment. And that there are beings that do not want to be judged 
So they have trapped themselves or encased themselves behind the fir firmament or firmament or whatever the word is. Now, some people would say, okay, so they say Elohim, okay, locked away or imprisoned, all right, these certain beings behind the fir firmament or firmament or whatever word it is. I don't know what the fucking word is, but I want you guys to understand we are Elohim. So why would we imprison ourselves? It's a very deep thing, you know? So we're going to go a little bit deeper. Damn, I had it. I'm trying to see if I can remember it again. Um, oh, well, I don't remember that specific uh, part. So uh, with the moon, and I, I, I did it in a, a watch party earlier, I was explaining how the dark side of the moon is resonating with that which goes beyond the dark side. So some of the things that go beyond the dark side of the moon would be your Mars, which would be the heart chakra, people. It would be Jupiter, which would be your solar plex, people. And then you have your uh, Saturn, which is your sacral chakra, which, all right, all signifies the below. And this is why it's dark. It's very... Okay. Think about your body. You have the lower half of you and the uh, top half of you. I want you to tell me which part of your body obtains more light. Is it the dark half? I mean, is it the lower half or the upper half? Now, I'm talking about physical light like the sun. All right? So let's name these chakras. You have uh, crown chakra. All right, you have third eye, you have throat chakra, okay? So I just named three chakras that don't have articles usually over them. They usually are exposed to light all the time. There is nothing covering them up. This is a deep thing, why they want to cover up the women or the veil, the veil of certain women, because it has to do with certain levels of activation within self. But anyway, you know, keeping darkness or staying in one's darkness does uh, accelerate uh, uh, illumination or self-illumination. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of like um, darkness gets things in motion. It's the light that keeps things still. But anyway, so, uh, so because the dark half of you isn't often exposed to light, that actually is project it out but they do that on purpose this is why they don't allow you to be naked if you were to be naked then the sun would permeate through all of you and then uh this the moon wouldn't be uh hijacking the sun picking up certain frequencies and signals that should be going beyond the moon into saturn into jupiter into mars things like that um you know but these planets you know represent you know body parts you know so the things that happen on the dark side of the moon or the hidden side of the moon are actually affecting the dark side parts of self. Specifically, like I said, your solar plex, your sacral chakra, and your root chakra. These things are being specifically affected by the technology of the moon. Now, Q, prove it. Okay, I got you, you know, I do this. So uh, there's something you call uh, money, okay? And money is a product of the moon, so it's called Mooney, okay? So Mooney, affects specifically more the lower part of yourself okay when people don't have money they become depressed they don't become solely activated or their solar plex activated they become depressed stagnant all right another thing that happens when people uh, don't have money they buy things they try to compensate and fill themselves up they try to feel feel like fill the gap fill the void okay these are the things that happens uh, when you don't you know have money also money you know you have things like uh, prostitution which is uh, fueled by money you have things like drugs which is fueled by money I'm talking about like physical money money you know so uh, these are things that are like technology of the dark side of the moon you know prostitution um, drugs you know haagen ice cream you know the commercials that come on that trigger you to want to get your ass up to go buy that haagen ice cream it's all moon tech you know, so these are the dark sides of the moon kind of influencing you. And then you have, uh, you know, uh, the light side of the moon that's reflecting the sun. 
you know, but it's not just reflecting the sun, it's reflecting the sun, Mercury, uh, Venus, uh, and then uh, Earth itself as well. So imagine like uh, Earth bouncing off Earth. So, uh, and then I'm gonna break this down like a cell phone so you guys can understand this too, you know. But basically, think of it like an older self and a younger self. This is what's happening to Earth. You're kind of getting hit with the future and the past at once. Because the, uh, the, uh, the sun represents the future, father, future. And uh, so you're kind of getting hit with the future. The future comes to you on a wave. And then uh, it passes um, Mercury, which is your memories, and passes your third eye, which is your thoughts. So you kind of get hit with future memories and future thoughts. But the moon's like, oh, no, fuck you. You know, I can't have you accessing certain memories and certain thoughts that could potentially bring uh, this uh, uh, artificial body down. So it hijacks some of those frequencies and some of those things. And then you can't really pick it up. But what you have to understand is this happened when they lowered your DNA strand. You know, you used to operate on 12 strands. Now you're operating on two. So the best way I was able to explain that was uh, essentially think of it like uh, uh, you have people who have 56K, like dial up internet, 56K. And the reason why they're not accessing, you know, faster information or quicker information is because they're not using it. They're not really using their internet. 56K is good enough for them. But you have some beings that have faster devices, faster machines, and these machines can then pick up faster signals. You know, so what they did was they dialed or, or they unwound uh, the human being into 56K, even though it used to be able to pick up like 5G, really 7G. Uh, and then that whole G thing is a, di is a deep thing also. Um, yo, I dropped so much information. 3G, okay, it's Earth. It's when we have the, uh, okay, all right, see, I'm sorry, I'm driving. So, you know, if I it was in my bathroom composed, I would have this shit more composed. But I need you to understand that spirits also represent the collective, okay? It's a collective. There's a collective spirit. All right, so that's the that's the global agreeance, and then that is the kind of uh, uh, chosen spirit over the the chakra. And these are like real beings that are like real names. But anyway, um, man, something's really fucking with me right now. It's crazy. Uh, So they, uh, they unwound you to 56K. So you don't really have the ability to pick up on the signals that's around you. And uh, this is how they dumb down your body. Your body is basically um, only able to pick up, uh, well, was only able to pick up 2G, you know, or two dimensions. So that's what you'll call the duot. Um, or 2G or two grids. So two grids. So it's the grid of heaven and the grid of hell. These are basically, um, you know, us as uh, uh, third dimensional beings viewing the 2D grid, all right? And then 9-11 brought the death ritual on, so then you became 4D beings, you know, they kill all y'all motherfuckers, 9-11. They did it twice, 9-11 and 2012. So they brought you guys to this death frequency, this 4G system. So this is when, um, because 4G didn't really kick on until uh, um, around 2012. 2011, uh, 12. Uh, but before that, we were in what you'll call the 3G network, all right? And 3G is Earth, Earth consciousness, Earth grid, all right? So you tapped into the Earth grid, the Earth consciousness. It's basically you creating a technology that puts everything on Earth as one, a global consciousness, a global grid, okay? That is operating on three dimensions, past, present, future, mother, father, child, okay? 3G, three grids. That is what we're operating in. And then you got into the 4G, the fourth grid, all right? So this would be your ghost. This would be your dead body or your ancestor, all right? Or ancestors. And this is basically through Wi-Fi uh, or, or Wi-Fi, whatever word you want to use, you were able to uh, then uh, channel in certain individuals into your uh, 4G network or machine. Um, and then that was basically Mars. So what you did was you tapped into uh, certain beings. Because this is what it's all about. Bring the dead back. That's it. This is what it's all about. Bring the dead back. And the dead need things to go in. 
So whether it's a body, whether it's a cell phone, a cell phone is a motherfucking body, you know. So the Mars, the Martians, the Martekians, you know, that's you don't even know about that word, uh, Martekians. Yeah, but the Martekians uh, are currently in your 4G system, um, and they brought a level of uh, certain feelings to you. Some of those feelings was desertion. Uh, some of those feelings were um, uh, buried. So you guys buried a lot of your secrets. A lot of you guys tried to bury your secrets to the point where uh, you thought that you were safe and that you can never be R. Kelly'd. But uh, that's a very real thing. You can bury your secrets as long as you want to bury your secrets. But we have now tapped into the five grid or 5G um, ometry, you know, and this represents Jupiter. And Jupiter represents justice. So now we have to bring justification to one's buried actions, to one's um, desertion. We have to justify the desertion of uh, what you can call the uh, clean leopard. Woo, that's a whole nother concept. But any you Bible thumpers out there who understand biblical texts, uh, you can then kind of understand what the uh, clean leopard represents. Uh, and then the spotted leopard. And this is kind of the Michael Jackson ritual. But anyway, um, you know, so this, uh, this, these global consciousness is us turning on different systems. Uh, eventually, we will be uh, 12. Uh, and what would 12 look like? Okay, so uh, there are... Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter... Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. Okay, so you have nine celestial bodies, okay? So then there has to be three more, three more that permeates, okay, to this grid, to this dimensional grid, all right? So those got to be physical places, all right? So if you were to uh, <clears throat> learn our trek, uh, there are um, three specific uh, land masses uh, that define uh, before we get to number 13, which would be Sirius. Um, so basically, you get something called Aldebaran. Aldebaran would be like considered the 10th dimension or the 10th grid. Uh, you then have uh, the Pleiades or the Pleiadians. Uh, which is another time space that a lot of us have resided within. So that would operate out of the 12th, I mean, out of the 11th frequency. Um, and this is the whole concept of 711. Uh, this is uh, Uranus uh, connection to uh, uh, the Pleiadians. Um, and then you have uh, Orion, uh, which would be uh, the 12th uh, dimension or grid. So. This would take us being able to uh, open up a line of um, remembrance, and then that would then open up a line of communication. Um, the reason why these beings aren't speaking to you because they don't speak to you on an external level. These beings speak to you on an internal level because it has to do with dialing in. It's kind of like uh, it's kind of like. Um, It's kind of like if cell phones didn't have, if, if people only talked on cell phones through speakers, instead of it being like an internal thing. If cell phones automatically created on an external level, you know, and then you hit the button to go internal. Kind of think of it like that, um, you know. But uh, the wars on Aldebaran, um, okay. Yeah, the wars on Aldebaran, that's a very real thing. That has to do with uh, the simulation uh, and the, so think of it, okay, so if you want to, look, I could break this down some real shit, you know, I could even explain what these places look like on a physical level, um, you know, but uh, Aldebaran would be what you would consider uh, what they showed you in the Matrix, uh, that machine type situation where things are like plugged in and, you know, uh, gridded into this type of uh, computer system, that's what's going on in Aldebaran, um, you know, and this is what the Vrail Society is dealing with and tapping into. This is why they have a lot of, uh, you know, horn symbols and Taurus, con uh, Taurus uh, connotations and connections and things like that. You know, but uh, I, I need you to kind of understand. Um, they're dealing with uh, uh, with 
Manmillion Tech, and Manmillion Tech kind of associates with hair. But I have a video uh, somewhere, I find it, that explains uh, the deeper connection into hair and what hair truly is. And I know a lot of people, you know, have an inkling and a, and a, uh, a level of understanding of uh, hair. But uh, in the most uh, simplistic form, I want you to understand that um, you have the ability to project out a charge or a spark. So I get a lot of people that inbox me and say, Q, what the fuck is going on? Like, my radio's going off by myself, by itself. My cell phone's glitching. My TV goes off by itself. I've caused the, I feel like I caused a blackout on my block. I mean, yeah, you know, these are, uh, you know, a, a, a form of organic or orgasmic energy, uh, which comes from sparking or combusting oneself. Um, you know, but... Uh, what this is, is uh, you developing your own field, all right? So your hair is kind of like an extension of your field, okay? So dreadlocks would be uh, symbolic for like a uh, tight-knit, you know, um, like poles, like lines. This is the type of grid you associate with. You have afros, you know, that's a grid, you know, uh, and, and you can kind of understand, you know, uh, the static charge or the combustion or the ionization uh, and the expanding of once an item, uh, an, a, a, a tron is uh, charged uh, like an afro, uh, you know, weaves, you know, covering, you know, one's field, kind of think of it like houses. You know, you have a field and then you place things over it. Uh, you know, I gotta figure out where I'm going. Hold on. Alright, so. <sighs> I dropped a lot of shit in this video, bro. So look, I'm about to conclude because I gotta leave in like eight minutes. So, if you have a personal choice what to do with one's own physical body, I would, on a personal level, advise cremation. Uh, the cremation uh, has to do with uh, you allowing one to connect back to the etheric fire or it's it's okay once again if you want to stay here on earth and there's nothing wrong with that there are people who feel like there's work they want to do here on earth it's feel like there's work that needs to be done in the subterrain or subsystems below us okay so a certain level of buried rituals you can put yourself in a box okay and uh Put yourself in a box um, and bury yourself in dirt. Uh, but what I would advise, and I hope this is potentially something that we can do, I, I would advise you to lace your coffin with real things um, like dirt. Um, I would have you, uh, this is a very real thing, people. I know. Okay, so you young men and young women out there right now, uh, you have certain things of you that you can have. Like, for example, one's eggs, one's sperm, one's blood, plasma. So these are things that you can actually have. And I would advise you to, I know it might sound disgusting or whatever, but have a vial of one's sperm. Have a vial of one's menstrual blood. Have things that are really you in one's coffin. And this would help. You know, a little glass of jar, a jar of dirt. You know, maybe a, 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 some flowers. You know, a pitcher. A uh, different things that really associate you um, to your earth self so that when you go beyond one's earth self you can still remember one's earth self so using uh, that level of remembrance helps uh, but this is you know old Egyptian uh, ritual right there um, you have another option of uh, allowing self to to Uh, you have another way of, and, and, and I don't mean to be mean with this, but this is a very real thing. Certain spirits are aware, like spirits, because remember, you know, spirits house, uh, or use consciousness. So there's a lot of people showing up or ending up in water, all right? And people are like, oh my God, they killed themselves. They drowned themselves during water, okay? 
you know, but on a deeper level, this was a way that they wanted to transition their body and not be capped. You can't tell, you know, the damn mortician, you know, let me go. I want to go out in the water, you know, and none of us is on that Viking shit where they put you, you know, on a boat. You can go to, to China, India, I think, where they do it, you know, but they won't let you do that here in America. So if you want to connect specifically with the element of Earth, unfortunately, this is what a lot of people have been forced into doing. They have to uh, place themselves in bodies of water. Anyway, another option. Uh, would be uh, okay, I think I'm here. Uh, another option uh, would be cremation, um, and then cremation and carbonizing that which is cremated. Cremated. Um, now, understand carbonization is a very real thing and a very important thing. Uh, everything turns to stone, but that's a whole other concept. I don't even think people are ready for that. If I told you that the pyramids were actually organic beings that used to walk around be like oh you sound fucking crazy but what the fuck was transformers was those not a form of organic beings walking the fuck around but anyway so uh everything like i said becomes stone and gets hard uh so you would kind of want your uh carbon to go back into that process of hardening you know so uh there are uh, companies now that allow you to turn one's ashes into um So fucked up. I'm in such a fancy spot right now, place, and I'm on live with y'all motherfuckers. But I need to be knowing where the fuck I'm going. <sighs> so you could, but but you know, I fuck with y'all. So I got, you know, I gotta give y'all an element of truth. Well, I'm gonna just ride around this motherfucker. All right. So <clears throat> you can place uh one's crystal. I mean one's uh ashes and forge a crystal. And I would advise you to forge that crystal and then place that crystal into some type of decorative piece uh, that you can either put on like a wand or that you can um, uh, put on like a, a crown, you know. Uh, see, but people don't even understand that's where the original jewels came from. They, they understood the technology of carbonizing their dead and then placing their dead into a... Uh, Jewels, if that's the word you want to use, and then being able to place the dead into jewels, and then uh, having a level of remembrance every time you wear the energy, you know. Uh, so yeah, so there's companies that can convert your uh, ashes into a jewel. Um, that would be wise. Uh, another thing that you can do is you can uh, turn your ashes into ink, ink, literal ink. And uh, then you can uh, actually uh, have that ink be used in portraits, writings. Uh, but the goal is to give this to that which is beyond you, which is your ancestor. I mean, which is your children, you know, your family, your extended family, whatever, whatever. So that's something you could do with your ashes. Um, turn it into ink or uh, a stone, crystal. Um, and then the last thing you can do is uh, you can use your uh cremated ashes uh facts but this is this i'm trying to give you a certain fucking because people like people are like where did spirit writing come from like what the fuck are you talking about the ancients understood how resurrection works so they would use the ink of the dead or put the dead into ink and then that's how you have the dead sea scrolls that's how you get the whole concept of fucking history and writing about the dead because that is what the fuck it was used for but that's a whole nother concept you know q you be dropping that shit boy but you be saying some other shit i don't understand i, I get it i get it i get it um, I'm going to be made into tea. I would love to drink you. I don't know, that probably sounds real sexual. But, you know, I'm with that in life. So, uh, <clears throat> the last thing you can do is you can, uh, see, this is the beauty of ashes. They can be divided. They can actually be um, spread into different constructs. So you can place one's ashes in a fresh body of water if you're choosing. You, you can, you know, place one's ashes in a fresh body of water you're choosing. That's called motherfucking Dasani with some tea, feel me? You know, that's something you can do. Uh, another thing you can do is uh, get a, um, go parasailing. 
you know, or get in a, a, a balloon, air balloon or whatever, and dump your ashes from above, so below, signifying, you know, uh, the action that you have taken prior to your um, physical experience, but also kind of signifying the completion of that, kind of knowing that you have aligned and, and subdued, you know, a level of uh, self by understanding self, by completing self. So you can complete the action. Dump your ashes from an above location. Go on a fucking skyscraper. Dump your ashes over the building, down the building, whatever. From a high elevation, drop them low. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things you can do. So I would just advise, um, you know, those that are really into putting yourselves in a box, you know, I'm with you. Go in a box. But at the end of the day, the other thing is in a box anyway, but that box then becomes... Uh, Ashed. So everything becomes one. Everything becomes a singularity. So it kind of also deals with, are you ready to deal with more of the dark parts of self? By doing cremation and becoming a singularity, becoming the shadow, because in the shadow, everything is uniformed. Or do you still want to associate with things? You know, and this is the things you can put in the coffin. So I got to go. Someone's already waiting on me like, bro, where the fuck are you at? I'm sorry. I'm doing a live. It'd be like that. You know, I got to juggle between both lives. So... If you haven't seen uh, my YouTube, it's really doing well right now. So please like and subscribe my YouTube. I've gained over 100 followers in the last night. Thank you. I don't even want it's, it's, to say the name wrong. But thank you. You know you who put me on. So sharing is very important. Uh, getting this uh, you know, whole community more in sync is hella important. So, uh, my, uh, YouTube link is Quentin Q Reeves. All you have to do is just type that in. It's the same thing as my, uh, my, uh, Facebook, but, uh, I'll try to provide the link once I get to my destination. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Um, it, this video was a little rough, you know, but, uh, I feel like you get the most genuine, genuine information when I don't cap myself. You know, when I just kind of like flow with it. So thank you guys for being patient with uh, my inconsistencies. You saw my piggy pups. I love them piggy pups. Love you guys. Appreciate it. I'm out.